Go to Google. Right now, and I mean this everybody. Go to Google. Like, don't shut the show down. Do it on your other computer. <laughs> Second monitor. Yeah, you yeah. go to Google and you type in cheap car shipping, fine car shipping, cheap auto transport, and you see the same companies come up. I mean, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter what you type in. Yeah. And and half of those results are the same company. Yep. And then it goes to a lead gen company who's then going to sell it to 10 brokers to compete on. Or more. It's funny, we... We and experimented with crazy. that. Yes. Yep. When we just started in 2016, we bought a bunch of leads. We're like, I don't know how to get customers. Let's buy some leads. Right. And Same thing like praying just, for rates. Buying exactly. A bunch of leads. And we just found it. We spent one month doing it. We're like, this ain't the way to go. It's about. garbage. And, um, you know, so that, that's been something we had I mean, consistently. Not all of it, but you know what from. I mean. You, well, yeah, you, no, it's, you talk to angry people that don't book with you well, anyways. Because they just they're getting ten phone calls within five minutes of filling out this form web form. I mean, I actually got the same experience as a business owner. I will never go online looking for a quote for a commercial copier ever again. Because it was the <laughs> experience that these people are going when they want to ship their car. Right. And it's pretty aggressive. It's hard for these guys to be insured, and so they're also going away. And we just need to. I, we got to get together and figure out moving cars. So and that's really what it is. And by the way, and that's why I talked about fleet uh, brokers and fleet management companies getting bigger is that these freight forward companies, you hear freight forwarders all the time. Repo mm-hmm. lots make less money because of freight forwarders. If you're out there right now trying to figure out what business to start, maybe rather than starting a driver trucking business, See if you can get into one of these middleman industries. I'm not saying I'm not saying I love the idea, and I, right. I, I, but I, but what I am saying is these are the companies growing. Why? Yeah. Why are the middleman industries growing, and the, the the guy in the trenches business is not growing? I mean, that, there's a couple reasons to that. Generally speaking, obviously, there's. There's different niches in this market. Right now, we're getting to the busier season for repos as we kind of get into holidays on repos in particular. Money's more tight. Uh, people default more on loans. So you kind of see business pick up there on the holidays, right? And then that kind of slows down during tax season right as new car sales are going up. So just to kind of circle back to that bit about the repo business picking up. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, about the difference between you know asset-based and some type of middleman company I mean, there's, there's a couple of reasons. There's a lot of regulations out there now for the asset-based carrier. Not only do you have the cost of overhead uh, of the actual equipment, which makes it more difficult to scale, when you're operating in that middleman environment, you know, you, you don't get to necessarily control the physical service of the product, but you do get to control kind of the environment in which all the data is flowing through and being communicated to all the parties involved. And it's easier to scale uh, maybe easier is the wrong word, but there's less financial barriers uh, to scale a middleman type organization because you have, there's uh, there's still heavy insurance, but there's less equipment involved. You know, our biggest asset here is our people. You know, our, our biggest fixed asset is computers and desks and chairs. So, it, you know, it's, it's different. We're not out here um, actually physically hauling the loads. We're not putting our safety at risk by being on the roads which is why you know, we've tried to position ourselves as a unique in the market to be the most driver-centric broker out there, to, to kind of take a nod to the fact that when I'm talking to a shipper, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Shipper, I'm not physically going to be there to pick up your car or deliver it or physically inspect it throughout the process. But we're going to try to facilitate the best experience possible that includes a good rate, good communication, and be here to answer the driver's questions and give them everything they need to make it as likely as possible that the shipping experience goes smoothly. Money's a a huge factor in that, as well as just really communication and and how we're managing the the translation of data from one party to the other. (laughs) Dear Jay, you don't know, I do it all day. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, though, I mean, there's a lot of drivers out there getting taken advantage of. And it's one of the things that yeah. drives us crazy. Um, when, when Gary and I we were in my dad's basement 
with a, a yellow notepad talking about this business we wanted to create. And based on our experience with brokers, we said, okay, well, we know all the things we don't want to do. So let's come up with an ownership team that has some core values that are aligned at the very top level that this industry just desperately needs. And we need to put it so forward facing, we're going to put it in the name of our company. And so the, the ACI stands for adaptability, communication, and integrity. And th there's, there's many, many things that have been created from those core values, but those have been the single most important thing in our business to communicate to both employees, to carriers, all the way up to our shippers. And I have no qualms about explaining to our shippers that this is my order of priority as a business owner. My employees are number one. We cover 100% of health insurance, 50% for dependents. We have retirement plan with matching. We do all sorts of crazy stuff for our employees. They're our biggest asset. So we invest the most time, money, and um, our brain power towards that. Second, right underneath our employees is our vendors, and that's the truck drivers out there. That They're the ones physically performing the work. They're the ones putting their bodies and livelihoods at risk to run these vehicles for us. And so it's our responsibility to make sure we take care of them too. Uh, and, and then last for us is, is the shippers. The idea being that if our employees are fulfilled and our drivers feel safe and secure working for us and know that we're gonna hold their hand through any problem, our shippers are gonna get a high quality experience. And you know we have an incredibly high retention rate for customers. And I think that stack, which not many other businesses in our industry have that priority. You can tell from the technology, it, everything is designed from the focus of the shipper. And that's why from a technology standpoint, we're trying to do everything from the vantage point of the driver. What is a driver gonna wanna use? What is quick and efficient for them? And yet make, make sure all the, the information is, is you know, heading upstream and downstream easily. Those are the things we're talking about in, in this conference room trying to figure out, okay, what is an application that drivers want? Yeah, I, um, interestingly enough, to piggyback off that, I interviewed two, we had two sales reps come here for a second round interview today. And in both of the interviews, I kind of, uh, they're, they're from outside of the industry. And one of the things I explained to them is I, uh, I don't mind being the second call broker. And kind of what I mean about that is often from the broker position, uh, we'll get approached by a shipper or we're approaching a shipper and they say, hey, we have X cars to move in, in these lanes. You know, can you give us a quote? And, you know, different brokers go about quoting differently. Um, I can't speak to other brokers. We try to work from the carrier up. So we'll get on the phone. We'll call people in our network, try to secure rates. And what I'm explaining to these interview candidates is that oftentimes our competitors Sometimes the, the other lesser experienced ones, um, or even sometimes the bigger ones, they'll dial the rate down to win the business with the shipper. Because there's oh, a lot man. of shippers out there that just, they're, they're cost driven completely. And the good ones understand transport and understand it's important to have that trustworthy relationship and ultimately to have good, reliable drivers that care about their business and your cars. And, you know, ultimately it boils down to money and relationships, empathy from our end. And so when I said the second call, when, if we're going to bid on something and the, and the shipper comes back and says, you know, I'm sorry, ACI, but you guys were, you know, X hundreds of dollars more expensive. You know, we really like to use you guys. You're high quality. We like your technology, whatever the reason may be. Is there anything you can do on the rate? You know, as a courtesy, we'll go one time back to the driver and say, hey, is there anything you can do on the rate? And if the drivers say no, then, you know, okay, we're okay saying no to the shipper. I'm sorry, the rate doesn't work for the drivers, uh, best of luck. And then what usually happens more times than not is I get a call the week later, two weeks later, hey, Aaron, my, my cars didn't move. Is your rate still good? And I have to say, well, let me make some phone calls and check. I don't know. Things could have changed in a week or two. And I call those same drivers back and either they're, you know, in the right place at the right time again and can do it or they can't, and we got to go back and start to source for some new drivers again, and get them a new rate. But in that process of trying to secure a good rate for drivers, you know, once we deliver on being that second option and we deliver a good quality service, that's how we win loyalty. And that's how we win trust with both the shippers and the drivers. 